That's twisted. This is Mark McNeese with my co-host Rick Rose, and you're listening to another edition of The Twist. Welcome to The Twist Podcast, everybody. This is Mark McNeese in uh, what's going to be a warm New Jersey. Today it's going up to 65. Rick, what's it going to be like there in Madison? Well, good morning, everybody. We're just about 10 degrees behind at 55 degrees this morning. A little dark still this morning, despite the time change. Spring has sprung. Did you remember to change your clocks? I did, uh, partly because I work on Sundays, and I did not want to be late. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and then we, we were just talking in the pink room um, that uh, it, we need to stop the whole time change thing, daylight saving. Every year, the experts come out and they say it's not necessary. It's not good for your health. The one thing I do like about this, what is it called, spring forward, is yeah. that um, I sleep later because the clocks have changed. So in, instead of getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning every day, now I'm, now I'm getting up at 5. So that much I like. So I would like to keep it one or the other and never change it. I hear you. It gets confusing for me because there are some states that don't change it. India is always, and I do a lot of work with India, like a half hour, like 16 and a half hours I don't get. And worse, you know, like your digital phones and digital things will change, but your clocks, your analog clocks on a, is there still such a thing as analog, like on your microwave or in your car? So I missed a movie this weekend, Mark, because I looked at the wrong. I can't believe that. How could you miss a movie? I was going to see the I was going to see the Batman, but I skipped it. But last night, real quick, quick aside as we get into what's new, I watched the movie Coda. Um, have you heard of it? Coda, C O D A. Yeah, which stands for Child of Deaf Adults. No. So it is a Child of a Deaf Adult. The the what? Uh, it's a young woman, a British actress. She was nominated for a BAFTA award the other day. Uh, did not win, but the gentleman playing her dad is married to the character, a uh, person playing her mom which is Marley Matlin, who you remember, winning uh, an Academy Award, first deaf person to win one back in 1986 for Children of Lesser God. Oh, by the way, God bless William Hurt. We've lost him. And he was oh, yeah, he died. A wonderful actor and good in that movie. And then her brother is also played by a deaf actor. Um, but the guy playing her dad won the BAFA for Best Actor. He is nominated for an Oscar. He would be the first deaf male to win. Uh, but it was a beautiful movie, Mark. I'm just That's all I got to say. Just a beautiful movie. So I did catch that at least. Very nice. And by the way, for people who are going to catch us on YouTube, now that we're putting these back there too, I have a fun psychedelic background that I'm testing out. And I have the t-shirt with I, that I must mention, Protect Trans Kids. I got oh. this and then I got my other t-shirt that says Trans Rights or Human Rights for our next trip to Texas, which will be never. But uh, <laughs> I, this is a huge issue for me. And I reached out to... um to Equality Florida, which is a, a organization, obviously, um, in Florida, to interview somebody there about all of this stuff, about the Don't Say Gay bills and about the assaults on trans kids and their families. So I'm looking forward to arranging that. Good it's a, it's a really hot. It, it, it's something I feel extremely passionately about. And it's not just because of Stephanie Ma, you know, my trans idol who passed away. It's because I see these, I see them as an exceptionally vulnerable population. And I, I defend the vulnerable. I'm like, attack me. If you want to attack somebody, you want to attack gay people, attack me. I'll fuck you up. You know, yeah. but these trans people, they're just, especially the kids. I mean, it's just, it's just horrible what's being done to them. And in Idaho, as you probably know, they're going, they're about to pass a bill that will make providing gender affirming, um, health care to trans minors. A punishable by life in prison so the oh. the kid could be taken from the parents and the parents could be put in prison for life uh and they're they're so nuts i don't want to get sidetracked on here but so many of these crazy people these right-wing nut jobs who are drunk with power they're always there they never stop being drunk with power when they can get it is um they all think that gender affirming health care means surgery it doesn't because I heard one of them going off about how you can't mutilate a child's body. It's it's most of it's hormone blockers if it's used at all. So, anyways, I'm going to shut up about it. But I am I feel very strongly about it, and I will, will keep talking about it. No, no need to shut up. A couple things there. You know, last week alone, I was with two moms that both have trans children, and it's like to think they could be, you know, as if they weren't to your point processing enough and 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 challenged enough. You know. Maybe it's easy for some trans moms and dads, but 
often it's a lot of challenges, you know, like even just talking to other people about it, little things like that. And then I did see the second thing in Idaho and Mark made a comment there. Yes, we do business in Idaho and it, it's a great concern. I wonder if in some ways this isn't a backlash of all the California people moving to Idaho. You know, I wonder if they're like, hey, guys, we don't want your type here. And these, these are some things we're going to attack. Because the second thing I was going to mention is yesterday, I think they passed or it's in legislation right now to do the abortion law, much like Texas in Idaho. Yeah, six it's, weeks. Yeah, like Idaho grow up. You don't have to follow Texas and you don't have to follow Florida. I used to love that state. I'm not going anymore. And back to your psychedelic thing. Man, I thought I took one too many Doritos last night. Boy, that's quite Oh, yeah, we did mention Doritos in the pink room. We Folks, it, Doritos are, are cannabis-laced um, snacks yeah. like Doritos. But when they say you can't eat just one, <laughs> please only eat one. That's all I'm going to say about it. We're going to leave it there. <laughs> do not eat more than one. Oh, my God. That's right. So, yeah, I didn't bring my little bell here. But nonetheless, we're still into what's new. Spring has sprung. We could talk about Tom Brady retiring, not retiring, but let's skip over that one. Yeah, yeah. Who cares? You know, last show, if you guys get a chance, go back in your archives. <laughs> we did a big thing about retiring people staying retired and how that's a new trend because for a while, retired people wanted to stay working. Apparently, Tom lasted a couple months and now he's going back to work. A um, lot of new shows coming up, by the way. I did watch one incredible show last night. Did I talk about this? Yeah, Coda, right? I just did. Was that in the green yeah, room? Yeah, you made it. Yeah, we, well, we had to start over for, for people who were wondering. It's okay. Yeah, so Mark was kind of guising it that we were in the pink room where we were, but we forgot to press record. So now I, you know, you know, my, my works, Mark. Sometimes it doesn't work. So I didn't remember if we had captured that. But there are a lot of Samuel Jacksons out in a new series. Did you see that? Amanda Seyfried. Uh, Julia Roberts is coming out a new season uh, in April on a new show called stars it's on stars it's called gaslit um and then there's a making of the godfather dramatization that's coming to paramount plus it's called the offer so a lot of new stuff going out there mark interesting yeah good stuff good tv i'll look for it now what's yeah. new what's new we went to maryland um i don't think i talked about this the last time because it was no. after that we went to maryland to have to surprise <laughs> lunch with frank late frank's late partner's mother who's 85 and her husband died recently so we our friend kathy brought her to lunch because they go out to lunch um and she did not know we were going to be there so it was really great nice. and then we're going back and we stayed at my sister patty's house on the way back for one night it was really fun and i don't have a whole lot else new you know we're doing the countdown i got seven weeks left at the job i love it uh, I'm gonna. I'm sure I'm gonna go back three days a week, but it'll be six hours a day on my terms. The three days I want to work, every, life is good. Life is gonna be great. You know, I just was when I do my weekly red lines news roundup for LGBT senior. I was. I always start out with good news, and this morning I wrote, there isn't any. Like I'm trying to find some good fucking news. No, it's got to be out there. It'll come to me. Maybe I'm yeah, depressed. Got, I don't know. You gotta find it for sure. My I gotta do some funny. more Doritos. I'm depressed. <laughs> My, no, they won't help with that. 21 days for me till election day, April 5th. I'm running for county board supervisor here in Dane County. It's been a pleasure getting out and meeting people and all that good stuff. St. Patrick's Day. Any any plans for this week, March 17th? We're going to go to, there's a place called Artie's. It's a pub. You know, it's a pub. Nice. It's a bar. Um, not far from here, but we really like the owner, Teresa. She's really nice. Or maybe it's Maria. Anyways, we really like her. <laughs> and... um. <laughs> We go there sometimes because it's it's pub it's bar food it's like you know chick uh, fish and chips and yeah shit yeah like that. I love that stuff. but they they're gonna they do cabbage and corned beef for for uh, Irish St Patrick's Day thing uh, so we're gonna go there Sunday and uh, I found out I am Irish I always said Scottish because um, Mac Mac, Mac niece, M A C the A got dropped at some point but it turns out through D twenty three and Me that I am mostly british and irish so i am into it this year because finally at the age of 63 i'm irish well you know years ago when this whole thing started you would have had been wearing blue not green mark as an ireland uh a patriot or uh anybody that's just having fun on that day yeah because originally a couple three quick facts about it it originally started with the color blue which is interesting then it switched to green because i guess the shamrocks they call it the emerald isle so it made more sense for them to go green sometime in the 17th century. 
There are over 34.7 million U.S. residents here that have Irish ancestry. That number is more than seven times the population of Ireland. Interesting. Wow. And then the other big thing is, you know, this last weekend on Saturday, they died the River Green in Chicago. This was something that started in back in 62 when the local plumbers union, who still run it, by the way, decided to dye the River Green. Back then, though, it would last for months, apparently. But now it only keeps it for a couple hours um it's very cool also what's really unique here in wisconsin and madison milwaukee they have the largest irish fest anywhere even bigger than anything over in ireland now that's not held till august though but um which is weird you would think they'd have it in march but of course the weather is not good but um it's a big festival that everyone celebrates and has a good time with um what's new for me is just kind of watching everything leading up to the oscars Lady Gaga, interesting. I think it was Saturday or Sunday. She, Sunday, she was up for a BAF award, like I mentioned, the BAFTA awards in London. But she was also up for a Critics Choice Award. Now, here's what interest is interesting: Critics Choice moved from earlier in the year to the same day of the BAFTA, so they decided to broadcast from both England and here in the United States. She was up for both awards uh, as Best Actress for House of Gucci. Did not win either. But what's so cool in total Gaga fashion, Mark? She wore two different gowns. She was prepared for one, I think. Uh, I forget who's who the designers were, but pretty cool. Unfortunately, she didn't win, but God, I love her. And I don't know if you saw this week. Here's what's new. She and her mom launched that new free mental health thing you can get on called Being There for Each Other. Have you heard of it? No. So she and her mom have that foundation they launched. And it's uh, the goal of this program is to build a kinder and braver world. It's aimed for kids to get on. Take this being there for each other. Just Google search Lady Gaga that. You'll take a course to learn how to be there for your friends and the conversations you can have, how to take care of yourself, but at the same time, help and take care of others. Isn't that cool? It is. We watched a little bit of the Critics' Choice Awards. I was disappointed that Cynthia Erivo did not win for the uh, doc, the movie about the miniseries about Aretha Franklin. I thought Kate Winslet was great in Mare of Easttown. She was really good. They were both really good. But I would have gone with Cynthia. That's just me. It was, like, really close. Were they good awards? I know you hate award ceremonies normally. Critics' with Choice, uh, I guess. I don't know who the critics are. I, I, they must be, like, Golden Globes. It must be. I wasn't, I wasn't asked to vote on anything. Well, I don't know. I was, and you are a critic. <laughs> I am. A harsh critic. Um, for me, though, what's new, I want to say, too, I just got a shout out to a couple of friends. Patty, who I've been working out with every other day, Mark, decided I'm off alcohol during Lent. I'm off coffee during Lent. So I thought it's time to focus on my body. So we've been lifting weights, doing cardio. Um, and then my friend Amy, she got me back to yoga, Mark. I took an Aroma Zen class on Sunday that I loved. I take flow classes, this place called Dragonfly. Right up the street in Sun Prairie is awesome. My friend Nikki works there, and they do a thing called Five Dollar Flow. You just pay five dollars to take that class. But excited to be back to yoga. Have you ever tried it? A long time ago, yeah, at the YMCA in the city. I did, did like it a couple it? times. As I really liked it. It yeah. makes you feel good. Oh my god, it does. And the aroma one is fun. The uh, the teacher comes around and sprays an aroma uh, spray as you're doing your zen holds you know like hold a hold a pose for three or five minutes so very cool that's what's new ding 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 headlines we got some headlines and some red lines russia it, asked china for military and economic aid for the ukraine war boo boo uh yeah and then um, the biden administration is telling china not to do that so we'll see what happens there 45% of millennials have no idea how much money is in their bank account, which is, uh, I, I mean, it's not that shocking. I mean, who does? But it was more about the fact that they have, like, they don't know what they got in the bank. I don't know. Uh, William Hurt, star of Broadcast News and Body, he died at 71, apparently from prostate cancer. Yeah, that's sad. So you got to pay attention to that, guys, especially. Well, women don't have prostates, do they? But the men, you got to pay attention to it. Mark Meadows, who wants to be Speaker of the House, registered to vote at an address where he did not reside. So my question is, why isn't he charged? You know, there was a black woman. There was a black woman in Texas who got out of on pro, she got out on probation and voted. She said she didn't know that she couldn't vote, and she, they put her back in prison for five years. 
So why the fuck is Mark Meadows allowed to commit fraud? And by the way, the only the only incidents of voter fraud I ever see in the news are by Republicans. They're by the guy who cut off his wife's head and voted for Trump on her behalf. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's the voter fraud that I see. I see no Democratic voter fraud ever. Um, some more news items here. Oh, I was, there was a man. Uh, there, uh, oh, I, there it is. The border authorities found 20, 52 reptiles hidden in a man's clothing. Oh, Can you imagine I'll that? 50? 52 reptiles. They had to be babies unless he's super tall. Yeah, or snakes. He, maybe he was Weird. just all wrapped up in snakes. Weird. And I don't have a lot more. The um, Did you see the Jane Campion thing where she... She nailed Sam Elliott for saying your power of the dog was not what not was too queer to be too gay to be a Western. And she said, Sam Elliott is not a cowboy. He's an actor. Oh. But then she, um, she fucked up at the critics, <laughs> critics choice awards. What did you do? see that? No, she won for power of the dog. Oh, and, uh, one of the competitors was King Richard, which was about the Williams sisters father. So Venus and and um, Serena were in the audience, and Jane Campion said something to the effect of, "Serena and and uh, Venus, you guys are great, but you never had to compete against the guys like I do." Oh my god! And then she got really, really raked over the calls for that. Yeah, why even go there? And then she, well, I think when we're getting people are getting awards, or you're you're in these excited moments, you're not thinking clearly because what a ridiculous thing to say. Um, she apologized profusely. Oh, good. I think she's a good woman. I mean, I I don't. I'm sure it wasn't intentional. Yeah, no, no, no. It's just a stupid thing. People say stupid shit, especially at awards ceremonies. Just get up, say thanks, and get off. My happy news is that the Utah governor said he will veto transgender youth sports ban. One of the few times you hear this kind of thing. Utah Governor Spencer Cox said that he plans to veto legislation passed Friday, last Friday, that would ban transgender student athletes from competing in girls' sports. Mm. Uh, Without his support, Utah is unlikely to join the 11 states, all Republican-led, that have recently Mm. enacted bans on transgender girls wanting to compete in school sports. In vowing to veto the bill, Cox directly addressed transgender student athletes, who he said found themselves a subject of political... Uh, debate through no fault of their own he said i know i wrote it down here i just want them to know it's going to be okay we're going to work through this now that's a human being that's a human being that's not a piece of shit masquerading as a governor of florida or Mm. texas so that was my happy news idaho put that on the list too oh i gotta add that to my since i said i couldn't think of any good news you know and i will tell you idaho is a beautiful place but i shouldn't be talking about it right now until they get ironed out you know the sad thing there they got a wacko lieutenant governor i mean she is absolutely crazy but uh what do you do um yeah so what's up mark your headlines oh my headlines that's it okay for my headlines yeah they were good that was good did you. you like it i tried Okay, cool. So for my headlines, I want to start right here. It's a great story. You mentioned the reptiles. So there was a young straight narwhal, and they may have little narwhals. So here's the deal. A narwhal is like this kind of whale. It's a a different kind of unique whale. Well, this very rare uh, one kind of worked his way through the Canada St. Lawrence River, and he hooked up with a bunch of other species of whales. And now he's floating with them and traveling with them. Uh, and apparently he's going to breed with them or she is or something. So it's going to be a new species of whale that's out there. I just find it kind of want one. I want, you want a little baby narwhal? Yeah, for my tank, for my fish tank. That'd be nice. Hey, last issue of last print issue of Entertainment Weekly came out. Did you know that? they? Stopped? I didn't know that. That's, that's sad. Well, Barry Diller bought... A uh, series of magazines from Meredith for two point seven billion dollars during the year, and he stopped them all from going to print. Um, other titles in style: Eating Well, Health, Parents, and People in Espanol. But Entertainment Weekly ended with the cover of Ewan McGregor, um, who's the ex Jedi Master, and it was uh, the story was actually about the new Star Wars um, series, um, or just about that in general. But do you know who the very first cover was? February 16th, 1990, when Entertainment Weekly came out in print. Who do you think was the first cover? That's Robin, a hard Robin Williams. It would be 100 people. That's a good guess. No, Katie, Will- Katie Lang. Really? 
Wow. Yeah, she, okay. she must have been big back then, remember? She was. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting. I still like Kitty Lang. like her music. Maybe I'll listen to it tonight. She, she performs barefoot. I love that about her, yeah. Speaking of performances, Rosalia was the musical act on Saturday Night Live this weekend. If you haven't seen it, look at her second set. You know, they usually do two songs. She wore a comforter, and I looked it up. It's trending now. These comforters people are wearing as clothing. Like, literally, like, if you walked out of bed, threw on your comforter, and went out on the streets of New Jersey, that's what she did. Very Andre Leon Talley, I will say, though. <laughs> Aww. And when well, he, used to, he wore all these big old things because he was so he big. Did. Big old puffy things making a statement will always uh, be out there with us. This is a really cool thing, and I had to call the number. I can uh, give the number here in a minute. But this is really cool. Uh, these kids came together in this school, and they decided to – they called it. One of the, the art teachers in our project, she organized in, he uh, in Heldsburg, California. And these kids came together and created the name of it. It's called the Pep Talk Hotline. So kind of like TikTok, but Pep Talk Hotline. And if you call the number – um, you get a little message from kids, uh, elementary school kids from West Side Elementary will give you messages like, hey, hang in there. Hey, you need a hug, you know, stuff like that. It's very oh, cool. I like I it. It's I like very that. sweet. I called it last night. The number is, this will make people have to rewind here, 707-998-8410. That's 707-998-8410. Very cute. You call it. They're getting up to three, when they launched it, 300 to 400 calls a minute or an hour mark. Great to me apply. Yeah, rates may apply. Um, that was a big one. Pete Davidson has Kim Kardashian's name now tattooed on his chest. They made oh it a video <laughs> Instagram. Can you believe that? Be careful. Yeah. It's not pretty. I mean, here, I'm kind of showing it. I, I don't, don't know if I see it. But I know he told Kanye to grow up. Did he? Yeah, they had a, some kind of tweet thing. Kanye probably didn't listen to him, did he? No, he's crazy. Kanye, Kanye does his own thing, you know? It's terrible. And that's all I got. Uh, my good news, though, this is a wonderful one, playing off the Lady Gaga thing. Uh, title is Dispatch Mental Health Teams Instead of Police Are Successful, so successful that they're expanding fivefold. This is a program that happened in the city of Denver. Instead of sending police in for emergencies that uh, relate to mental health, um, this makes sense. They're sending in health professionals. I saw Teams that. Of, yeah. And they started in 2020. They have white vans. They're kind of similar to like a police car, if you will. But this also allows police to do what they're supposed to be doing, you know, not going on calls like this. A lot of these calls are related to poverty, homelessness, addiction. Um, and it's very, very cool. This team is going out and doing this work. Um, we're working on programs here in Wisconsin like that and in Dane County, too, just so you know. But I love it. It's called Good. the Stock Very program. good. Big boo, big boo, yeah. My big boo is the right relaunching their, uh, quote, gay people are pedophile slur, starting with Governor DeSantis' spoke bi spokes bitch, Christina Pushaw, P U S H A W. Uh, you did not just say. She's a spokes bitch. Oh, absolutely. I've never and, heard um, of Because she was, you know, she came out last week and said that. It, that it's not a it's not a don't say gay bill and the people who are opposed to their to it are groomers you know and and as a gay man you i'm you, you know that they've been saying that crap about us for decades and we were i thought we were getting past that where where the general public does not think that gay men are pedophiles and groomers but then laura ingram started saying the same old the same shit you know here we go again after all these years they're going to drag this crap out and say that, you know, we're opposed to these bills because we're, we, we want to groom children uh, for something. I don't know, I guess for sex. I don't know. But my big boo is to that whole thing. I can't stand these people. Um, they're evil and ugly and nasty and vicious. My big boo, yeah. Uh, I got a couple of them. I'm just doing back to back. California Governor Gavin Newsom for offering, offering California as a great place for Disney to move its business from Florida. Of course, Disney has uh, business in good Florida. For him. But Gavin's yeah. saying, bring all your jobs to California. We'd love to have you. Because uh, Ron DeSantis uh, mocked the CEO of Disney, which I think is a ridiculous thing to do when they employ half a million people in Florida. Uh, and he 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 mocked Disney as a quote so, quote woke corporation. Uh, you know I I know it's not easy to just move your company move five move all of that, but 
yeah, somebody needs to put that man in his place. Right. Um, <clears throat> and then I also want to give a booyah to Mitt Romney for calling Tulsi Gabbard uh, the ex House member, um, but she's still she's still dangerous because people on that listen to you know people in that environment listen to her. He anyways Romney called a traitorous for spreading Russian propaganda, and Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, and others are doing the same thing, and they're being played on Russian television. Mm. Russian TV is state television is playing cri- clips of Tulsi of a. Uh, Tucker Carlson and probably Tulsi Gabbard to to uh, justify their brutality and their invasion of Ukraine. So that's it, I think. Oh, man. My big boo, actually, uh, you know, sometimes I search, like, who was the worst person this week? Or just to get some ideas. So I Googled it and something came up. This was a couple weeks ago, actually, when I was looking for fodder for the show back then. Came up as the worst person in the world. So I clicked on it. Well, it turns out that's the name of a movie that was shot in Oslo, getting a lot of uh, attention in the awards um, categories that are going on right now, like I mentioned earlier. So I went with my friend Tori. We used to work together, but we love film. So although we no longer work together, we'll meet up and, and see a film. We went to see this film, Mark, and it was really great. Uh, have you heard of it? Has anyone heard of it? No. Uh-uh. It's really good. Um, it's told in 11 or 12 segments plus a prologue and, a, and an epilogue. And what I love about it is just the story of a young woman named Julie and the things she goes through from uh, dating and having sex to make uh, having an affair, like one of the chapters is called The Affair, if you will. Um, token up with someone else, then her first boyfriend gets cancer, then she comes back to see him, and then she's a photographer and she's shooting, shooting on a set with her old boyfriend's girlfriend, you know, just things that happen in life, right? This is what I'm describing is something I could describe about any of my friends, right? It just happens. But the story and the premise of the story and the title comes from the fact that sometimes we think we're the worst person in the world for the things we've done to others, whether it's breaking up or, um, you know, having an affair or whatever. And we're really not. That's just what is called life. So um, my boo is just related to that story that I looked up the worst person in the world and it happens to be just you or me or just people that we think we're so bad, but are we? We're just living life, you know? So good movie. Go check it out. Um, loved it. My big booyah. This is awesome, Mark. Airbnb announced that will offer free short-term housing for up to 100,000 refugees fleeing from the Ukraine. They're working yeah. with, yeah, all Idaho. over. No, in Poland, Germany, Hungary, because we forget, you know, it's an international thing. And Romania, so people have stepped it up and said, you can use our homes, block them out, and are allowing refugees to come in. Uh, This is part of a larger movement by the company to support refugees and other displaced people around the world. Last month, the organization organization announced that it provided over uh, 21,300 Afghan refugees in place. And they've also uh, provided free temporary housing to over 20,000 refugees from Afghanistan, um africa the middle east central and south america isn't that cool i like that a lot you wouldn't think about it and what one one last thing i want to say when it comes to social media they did this really unique thing where people were pouring money into the ukraine using airbnb so what would happen is any uh ukrainian airbnbs that were out there people from the united states and other places were booking them so all this money was going into ukraine so someone would book a you know, they, they worked with the people owning the the homes there and they would take like nine reservations a night and get all that money. And they brought in one point nine million dollars for Ukrainians in just 48 hours of doing this blitz. All that money then was uh, was used and given to um, the uh, the um, the um, Ukrainian population to help the fight. So interesting. Big boo. Big boo. Yeah, I like oh, that. That thing's cool. It's Airbnb. You know I'm going to take Airbnb when I post this. Yes. You know, Tw- twist know. tops. As we're moving right along. I got two of them. One is Jimmy's Famous Seafood, the restaurant we went to in Baltimore uh, that yeah. I mentioned. Um, it's just really it, – it was. it's been on diners, di- drive-ins, and dives, and it's been on the Food Network. It's been on other things. It's just a really fun seafood place. If you're in the Baltimore area, you got to try it out. And it's a very well-known the uh, the crab cake Frank's crab cake was as big as a pancake, and nice. uh, it's one of those places where it's not real expensive, but you get so much food that you can get two meals out of it. So everybody, Jimmy's famous seafood, uh, oh, tell yeah. them Mark and Rick sent you, and you will get absolutely no discount. Yeah, they'll say who the hell's that? 
Uh, yeah, my other my other twist top is um, I'm late on this, but when we were visiting my sister and my my niece was there because her she and her family live nearby, she told me to watch. She told us to watch a documentary called My Octopus Teacher. Yes, it's from it's from 2020, and we saw it, and it was phenomenal. I mean, it was a beautiful documentary about this man. He was a wildlife cinematographer. Um, who had, was burned out on on his job over the years? He was really tired and depressed, and he started going snorkeling mm-hmm. in the area where he had grown up in South Africa. And he didn't wear a wetsuit; he would just do the ho- do the breathing apparatus, the, the snorkel, and a and a trunk swimming bathing suit, and go into the water. And he ended up developing this really interesting relationship with an octopus. Um, it's it was it was emotional it was powerful i will never eat octopus again um and you just got to see it and it also won it won the oscar it started out as this small movie um and it went on to get international acclaim to win the oscar and during the pandemic everybody was talking about it it was very viral it's called my octopus teacher highly recommended i watched it a year ago or two or whenever it came out and highly recommend it as well. It's um, it's awesome. I didn't expect it. Did you? I mean, you didn't know what you're getting into when I started watching it. No, it was really well done and very um, thought provoking. You yeah, know, I, I would it. like to not eat animals at all, but that's not going to I'm just not cut out to, to do that. You know, it, it, it's a new story I forgot to share earlier, but it reminds me, this reminded me of this story that, you know, that I was going to share now. I just looked it back up, but it's just the sensory elements we all have or that, you know, sometimes it's not verbal expression. So much of what we do, we talk about body language, we talk about smell um, that can be in relations to animals. Look at how dogs sense things and people or cats sense, th- sense things and move away or an octopus. But this was a story, Mark. This is fascinating. A couple of years ago, a woman named Joy Milne, she made headlines when scientists discovered that she could smell Parkinson's disease on people with a disorder. And Wow. Yeah, and it's cool. And because of her, they've now created this thing. Researchers have created a thing called the E-Nose that could someday diagnose a disease in a doctor's office following what's going on in her olfactory. Um, wow. And they do say some people like her just have a heightened sense of it. And she noticed the smell in her husband, who a year later was diagnosed or sometime later. And they said that it is when you look at a Parkinson's, someone living with Parkinson's, they are emitting a certain something. Yeah. Isn't that? Yeah. I'm watching your face right now. You're really into what I just said. Yes. Yeah. No, it doesn't surprise me. It's only fast. that it's a person. I would imagine an animal could do it. Yeah. Like, uh, what do you call those dogs? What do you, you know? Yeah, those- they're called dogs. Yeah, those, those seeing, <laughs> no, seeing eye dogs. The other day, I was at the, uh, I was at the, you know, I do a daily drive through for a car wash. I'm a member of a car wash, and they have the, they have the, you know, the, the hoses out there to vacuum first. And I pull up, and there's an undercover police car, a canine police car, as it turned out. And the guy, the police officer, was had his German Shepherd smelling dog, and he had the vacuum, and he was vacuuming the dog. Wow. Uh, what is that about? That's interesting. The dog probably liked it. It probably felt good. It did. He was kind of like shaking his ass. You know how that goes. Um, but if anyone knows why one would vacuum their dog, please let me know. I just kind of thought just that got was... a haircut. Yeah, and maybe he's like, "I'll vacuum the dog as a pre, pre, you know, precautionary so the dog doesn't shed in my car." I don't know. So I only have one twist stop, and you may have heard of it. There is one little tease here in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Um, They actually started in New York City about the time you and Frank were living there. It is called Van Leeuwen's Ice Cream. Have you heard of it? No. uh -uh. Oh, my God, Mark. So their story is they started as a truck. It's uh, two young guys and a young woman. They started in 2008 driving a yellow truck in the streets of New York City. They said, you know, everybody looks for healthy options back in the day. People Mm -hmm. did and they still do. They said, but what defines healthy to us? is happiness and so they created these ice creams that are just a combination of milk cream eggs and cane sugar and then they created some for their vegan friends as well using coconuts cashews and oats but yesterday it was announced or two days ago it was announced that walmart is now starting to carry some of these so i advise you to go out and try them i tried the one they made famous the first one they did was macaroni and cheese we talked about on the show here before macaroni and cheese ice cream by van lewins 
They have other flavors like Brooklyn Brown Sugar Chunk. They have cookies and cream. Not not that great of an idea, but it's there. They have Earl Grey Tea, Honeycomb Ice Cream, Hot Honey, uh, Sicilian Pistachio. I mean, here's the top lists. Um, Planet Earth is made from blue sp- spirulina, almond ice cream filled with matcha green tea. Pizza, which is cream cheese and mozzarella ice cream, a tomato jam swirl and basil crust cookies. Hot honey, like I mentioned. Royal Wedding Cake. It was inspired by the cake served at the Royal Wedding in 2018. It's got a base of floral and sweet cream cheese with chunks of lemon sponge cake and elderberry frosting. Two more, just uh, indulge me. Bourbon Cherries Jubilee, made with swirls of bourbon cherry compote and wild blueberry shortcake. Vanilla ice cream, chunks of shortcake, and a blueberry swirl. How wild is that? I want some. Let's go. You can check it out. 3,500 Walmart locations in all 50 states are carrying it. And you can go to stand-up locations uh, in about seven different states. They're opening one, I know, in Connecticut soon. God, good stuff. Listicle time. You got some listicles and some testicles. Oops. My listicle is the most annoying passenger on a train. <laughs> I mean, on a plane, I'm sorry. The most annoying passenger on a the plane. The things this they is, do? Huh? Is it the things they do? Is that the Yeah, list? this is from Travel and Leisure. Love it. Let's hear it. Uh, actually, a website called Only Wanderlust, a travel resource website, recently surveyed more than 1,500 travelers on the most annoying passengers on a plane. Oh. Man spreading, body odor, and even the sometimes beloved tradition of clapping when the plane lands made the list. According to Only Wanderlust... These are the, and I didn't read all of them. There were like 20. I'm not going to do that. The common airline passenger annoyances is in order are the kicker, your seat being kicked. Oh, yeah. Literally. Usually a child, and yes. I just want to yes. just yes. throw the child out of the plane. <gasps> Hate it. Um, the stinker, a passenger with bad body odor. I haven't really experienced that very often. Me either. No, no. Yeah, that's a little lower class than I fly. Um, the Come loud on. and... The loud and proud, other passengers talking loudly. Mm -hmm. That's more of an issue for me in restaurants. I really don't like it in restaurants. We run it, especially when the acoustics are bad. It's okay. And by the way, Mark, I am one of those just because my voice is kind of booming, you know, and I hate being that guy, but. You're a boomer. That's for sure. The noisy kid, crying babies or children. That's okay. They're annoying anywhere, not just a plane. The recliner. Here you go. The seat in front of you reclining yeah. when you when you got a you got food on it and it goes all over your lap. Right, and I go back on mine slowly because I don't want to be that guy, you know. So I just slowly edge my way back. Yeah. The eager. This is passengers standing and getting bags as soon as the oh. plane lands. <laughs> it's like, well, do they think that they're going to get out of the plane any faster doing that? Right. Just stay <laughs> seated. You know, you're not going to jump to the head of the line with that shit. Uh, the chatty Kathy, your neighbor talking to you throughout the flight. I don't really, I'm able to like do a bitching resting face or whatever they call it. So people don't talk to me when I don't want them to. I'm pretty good at that. <laughs> well, I used to do that. Now I made two very, very dear friends, three very dear friends. Uh, one that lives here in Madison. We're still friends to this day. Actually, she's my events planner on my campaign. That's Peggy. I met a, a, a wonderful woman named Kirsten. Anytime we're in the same seats, I take a picture of my seat and send it to them, let them know. And then I met a wonderful friend named Shayla in Iowa. That I was the I was the chatty Kathy, and I became friends with these three. Have their phone numbers, share things on Facebook. Shayla sent me a birthday gift. Isn't that crazy? Yep, you made the most of it. Yep, uh, the armrest hog, your neighbor taking up all of oh, the armrest. Yeah, that's a good one. I like to just flip up the armrest. I don't even. Oh yeah, I like to it. have more. Yeah, then you're right. Me too. And then the night owl, a bright own bright phone or a tablet screens on night flights. Now I don't usually take night flights, but uh, uh and I won't fly unless I absolutely have to because I hate the experience now. But anyways, those are the. That's my list of annoying passengers on a plane. Those are so, you know, I travel all the time, despite, you know, COVID, I was still traveling, following the rules, but every one of those hit a chord. And I also, hey, like, we're going to lower the lights now, we're on a light flight, but when you're ready to land, the freaking plane just whips them up, you know? The other one I hate is the person that reaches over and turns the air on above you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't want that air. I don't want it next to me. I don't want it on me. I don't want it, Mark, you know? Yeah. So, so I'm going to pass on my twist tops. I mean, on my uh, list of gold because I think I was um, 
there with my ice cream flavors. Kind of. Yeah, you did it. You did it for sure. I did it. Oh, you're just delighted because I'm skipping and making time up surreptitiously. Well, we're going to the tax man pretty soon. I know the tax man. I got my, my tax. Taxes. My my tax man. Rodney, he wrote me the other day, texted me, and they're on the way. So it's always scary to open that envelope to see if you get money back or not. You know what I'm saying? Are you going to go out with him? You know. <laughs> Rodney, I think he may be divorced. I'm not going to take him because he'll hear me <laughs> talking about it. But you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're not doing a shout out on that one? <laughs> no, I'm not. But do you know who his, uh, his nephew is? We've talked about him on the show. He was from Peoria, Illinois. He's that Congress, U.S. congressman that got in trouble because he said he wasn't gay, but he is. And now on his social media, he's always got his ripped abs and he's out there. Oh, he's, he, yes. I know who you're talking Aaron about. Aaron Sh- Shrek or Aaron Shrek, Shock. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he had a photographer that traveled everywhere. Remember him? Yeah. He redid his office like a polo lounge. That's, I hope his uncle didn't have to do his taxes, you know. Now, maybe I'd do his nephew. Whoop! But Better not, not shout out. Certainly not, Rodney. I'm looking him up. Yeah, Aaron Aaron John Shock. That's yep. it. Yeah, a former American politician. Just so you know. Yeah. Speaking of airlines, by the way, I just wonder. You know, only Delta travels right now with alcohol on board. Um, American does, but they only serve it in first class. I've complained about that. But now the big thing is, when are they going to relinquish the mask mandate? What do you think? Probably by this summer for sure, maybe by the end of April. I know the cruise ships, we go on a cruise at the end of May, and I believe we will not have to wear the masks outside the cabin. I'll take wow. them with me, but when, when we went in on December, you had to wear a mask anywhere outside of your cabin, uh, which is kind of a drag. But I don't think we're going to have to do that this time. I'm waiting to find out if we actually, if we still have to get tested. You know, you had to do a vaccine passport, which is fine. We've got our backs. But do we have to get tested 24 hours before we get on the ship? We're going to find out. Have to, right? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> I uh, I don't know. A lot of my friends, when I posted this question, were like, nope, that'll prevent us from ever flying again, which is sad. I mean, I'd, I'd hate to get to that point that you say you'll never travel again, you know? Now, what's your social media stuff? And then we'll Oh, my our- social media stuff, some good ones. Um, follow it. You know, Mark's... Uh, posting a lot right now to our facebook and our um instagram Insta. account some fun things like these are quips from mark i thought i'd share people are now following us here's what you're missing out mark said starbucks needs an express line for people who just want plain old coffee very Good. true i because I, I go there on my break we have a starbucks at work and i just i got 15 minutes or yeah. whatever I even maybe i have five minutes i just want a fucking cup of coffee i don't want to stand in line behind people ordering some crazy well, fancy bullshit with you know six ingredients come on well i'm gonna take panera on this because i love panera you go in and get your own coffee you know you can pay at the kiosk and then just go get it starbucks yeah. doesn't do that and they should another quip from mark on instagram why doesn't anyone ever say they have smaller fish to fry <laughs> you get an answer on that that's a good one mark and here's the last clip that Mark posted. It wasn't his, but I loved it. There's a comedian here, actually, Mark, in a comic that does uh, live here at the Comedy on State Street. And he does little quips like this. And this reminded me so much of him. I don't trust stairs. They're always up to something. Yeah, I like that. That was cute. That's a good one. Thanks for sharing that. He uh, he does all these quick little ones that are just so funny. Also, I want to shout out to my friend Michael, who lives over in Germany. He always finds Wisconsin things and sends them to me on our account. This was a quote from Charles Barkley on Aaron Rodgers, um, who said, I think he's the pretty girl that you got to tell her she's pretty every day. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of is, you know, and he's making all this money that he shouldn't be making. One last thing on TikTok, I did uh, search around. There is a guy making wax out of uh, wax figures like Sumatran elephants from Baby Bell cheese wax. You know that red wax? Oh, yeah. Uh, wow. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. And lastly, one more thing before we move on to our quotes to end the show, Mark. This is fascinating to me. People, remember when you were talking like, what the heck? Is this really a flavor when I was talking about Easter candy and I talked about s'mores? Yeah. So someone wrote me in this. It doesn't matter uh, why it is. It's just awesome. And they were explaining that it has a little rice in it and it's like a perfect complement to any Spring celebration, use these candies when you're cooking, making Easter cookies, et cetera, et cetera. But they, like me, have looked and looked, and they said they can't find any connection between honey graham flavor and Easter itself. But Okay. So that's it. That's what I got. What you got for a quote, Marky? Well, a friend of ours, Amanda, her um, 15-year-old dog died the oh. other day, oh. and it's very uh, 
you know, those of us who have animals in our lives, we know what's going on. And it's going to be really, uh, it's really sad. It's just part of the, part of the agreement that you make when you have animals in your life that they, you will outlive them in most, most cases. Uh, and you have to learn to accept that that's part of the deal. Yeah. So this is a quote that she put on her Facebook page. It's from a woman named Suzanne Clothier from something called Bones Would Rain from the Sky. I don't know if it's a poem or a book. Anyways, this is her quote. There is a, oops, sorry. No, you just, sent me something. I did. There is a cycle of love and death that shapes the lives of those who choose to travel in the company of animals. Huh. It is a cycle unlike any other. To those who have never lived through its turnings or walked its rocky path, our willingness to give our hearts with full knowledge that they will be broken seems incomprehensible. Only we know how small a price we pay for what we receive. Our grief, no matter how powerful it may be, is an insufficient measure of the joy we have been given. Wow. So for all these animal lovers, and I call them my animal friends. I don't call them my pets. Mm. Animal That's, companions. Yeah, you know, and people know that I have a challenge with animals only because you hit it. You hit it right. We will outlive them. And that's, you know, they never say a parent should bury a child. You know, we face that during HIV and AIDS, which is more poignant than losing a pet. But uh, it's sad. And it's hard for me to even fathom getting close to an animal. So anyway, my uh, quote comes uh, from a lovely, lovely friend of mine, Mary Toma. Who we've talked about this show. We've actually had her as a guest. Yeah. In, uh, Previous version of the podcast. She now she's Roma. She's Aromatoma. She's Aromatoma. Mary and Ron, good friends of mine, retired out to Colorado, beautiful home. So go to marytoma.com. That's Mary T H O M A dot com. You can sign up for her web uh, for her uh, e blasts her uh, blog called Hearts Content. It's an e newsletter that goes out that really talks about the intersection of compassion and creativity. Um, she also recently was a guest on our friend Juanita, who you can find on social media on Instagram. Juanita is an actor friend of ours who now does a podcast mark called The Soul Hugger Sessions. And she had Mary on as a guest. Um, she dives into yoga, fashion, astrology, couture, jewelry, mystical manifesting mindsets. And Mary was on there as a guest. It was delightful to hear the two of them talk. You can follow Juanita on Juanita, W-A-N-E-T-A-H. Um, they're both wonderful women of inspiration to me, uh, both clean and sober and just wonderful people um, that just are right to the point. When I say clean and sober, I mean just clarity of mind. Love them. This quote uh, Mary picked and put on uh, her blog from Audrey Hepburn. So I thought I'd end with this quote. Um, tied in with what we said earlier and uh, shout out to Airbnb and folks that were part of that campaign earlier. Um, nothing is more important than empathy. And also, Mark, this relates to you are wearing your shirt today. Nothing is more important than empathy for another human being suffering. Nothing, not career, not wealth, not intelligence, certainly not status. We have to feel for one another if we're going to survive with dignity. Love it. I believe it. I like it. It's a good end to the show. Yes. Everybody will be back next week with twist number 188. Thanks, and, guys. Have a in the meantime, day. enjoy the spring. Spring is coming like in a couple days. It has sprung. It is. Enjoy here. it. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye, Mark. You've been listening to the Twist Podcast with co-hosts Mark McNeese and Rick Rose. Fasten your headphones and join us next time. Mm -hmm.